Uh, what was I saying? Uh, and uh, you were talking about high heels and walking with your cane. <laughs> I'm always talking about high heels and walking with a cane. Leave them in the ashes. Hey, y'all. Welcome to The Offbeat. It is me, Lachi, just a New York girl going blind and trying to stay fabulous. I'm here to motivate and educate. And if you like the series of words I just said, please hit that subscribe button and help hit the bell. So today I want to talk about ableism, but before we get into it, I want to describe how I look. I'm a black girl with long black wavy hair, fully done makeup with cute mink lashes. I'm wearing big golden hoop earrings, a gold necklace with a music charm, and an Alana Soul blue blouse from Smart Adaptive Clothing. Smart Adaptive makes clothing for folks with disabilities who are here to be independent, professional, and feel and look amazing. So what's all this talk about ableism? Really? Another ism? Yes, ableism. It is real, it exists. Let's list off a few things that people do and say that are ableist without even realizing it. I'll Start. Oh my God, she's blind. If she can do it, you can do it too. Or I don't have a disability, so I'm able-bodied. The only real disability is having a bad attitude. I know a doctor that can fix what you've got. Oh, is your friend blind? What's wrong with her? Does she need help? No, sweetie, you need help. You are being ableist. Doing things like not speaking directly to a disabled person, assuming a disabled person can't do everyday tasks, pedantizing that you know the cure and that they haven't figured it out yet. A lot of folks may think this is not ableist, and that it is actually positive and helpful to the community, but it's actually harmful. It's okay if you didn't know, but now you do, so stop doing it. <laughs> Okay, I am proud to have a disability. Because of my disability, I've got so many amazing opportunities and most importantly, been able to really celebrate myself and every part of who I am unapologetically. Now, speaking of celebrating amazing folks with disabilities, I wanna show y'all something that I'm really, really excited about. Look, let me show you right now, here. I wanna showcase this amazing painting called Shine by Clara Woods. She's a 14 year old painter, artist, and model from Italy, stroke survivor who does not speak, but her voices through her family. She painted this. The painting is of a blood orange sun with yellow outline. Purple waves seep in from the top and dark blue waves seep in from the bottom. While the painting is called shine and you're quickly drawn to the sun, I can also see an interpretation of an eye outlined with light seeing beyond the darkness. Thank you so much, Clara. I'm really honored to know you and to support your work. If you want to learn more about Clara Woods and her art, find her link in the description. And with that, I'm really excited to announce my next special guest, Haban Gurma. Haben has been a powerhouse for disability justice, social change, and civil rights. She wrote an amazing book chronicling her journey as a deafblind woman conquering Harvard Law. I had the pleasure of reading her novel and I was like, okay, we got another black blind female out here doing big things. I've been calling her my twin if I graduated Harvard and wrote a best-selling novel. All right, folks, without further ado, my conversation with Haben Gurman. Hi, Haben. I am so excited to have you on The Offbeat. This has been a long time coming. You are my twin. If I was able to get a Harvard education and write a best-selling book. <laughs> so happy to have you. How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing well. Now I'm full of questions. Why are you not able to write a best-selling book? Who said you can't write a best-selling book? Whoever said that is lying. Wow. All right, folks. You've heard it from Hobbin herself. I am now tasked to write a best-selling book. So I am going to go ahead and hire Hobbin as a ghostwriter to go ahead and do that for me. Um, before we begin, I would love for us to take the time out to describe ourselves. Go ahead, Hobbin. <laughs> Hobbin speaking. I do not work as a ghostwriter. I believe Lachi is talented enough to write a book herself. And if Lachi, you want to partner with another writer to do that project, you can absolutely can. So visual description. I'm sitting in my living room on a sofa, white wall behind me, plants probably visible, maybe not. And my hair is in a side ponytail. I am a black woman. My family is from Eritrea and Ethiopia. I love that. I love that. Yes, 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 yes. I will do what I can to make sure I get that book done because I too am a black female daughter of immigrants from Nigeria. I have long black 
wavy hair. I am wearing a black and gold shirt. And behind me is a painting from the lovely Clara Woods. That is a picture of a sun. It says shine. So very excited to be here today with you, Haben. So let's start right from the top. I want to talk about exactly how we're communicating because Haben is actually a deaf blind woman. Haben, why don't you inform us of how this communication is happening? You'll be better able to describe it. <laughs> I can definitely tell how we're communicating. So I'm speaking with my own voice. There's so many different ways to have a voice. There's signing. There's typing, there's using assistive devices, and it's important to value that there are many different voices out there. We need to make an effort to value all voices. For receiving information, I'm using a Braille computer and I'm holding it up. There's Braille dots along the bottom. There are many different kinds of Braille computers and this is one of them. And I have a typist listening in, typing what's being said, I'm reading it in Braille and responding by voice. So there's a bit of a delay between when you speak and when I respond because the communication is still coming through. I like that you point out there are so many different ways to communicate and it doesn't hinder us from being able to have deep, meaningful conversations from people being heard, from people speaking and from people being received. It's all about the intent of wanting to hear what the other side is saying. and. There's no barrier that can keep us from communicating. So, because you know I'm a fangirl out here. So, very exciting that we're able to make this happen. There are terrible barriers out there that could keep us from communicating, like racism that says certain voices, like black voices, are not as valuable, or sexism that says high registered voices are not valuable. And then there's ableism. A lot of deaf voices are ignored because ableism teaches so many people to ignore disabled voices or deaf voices. You know, you bring up a good point. It's actually one of the questions I wanted to ask you. So you are what I would consider a triple threat. You're multi-marginalized in the best of ways. You are an immigrant, a black female that has a disability. My question to you is, while we do have to face ableism, we do have to face sexism, and we do have to face racism, which of the three gives you the toughest obstacles that you have to overcome? Or is it just so intertwined and just so mixed together that you can't even separate it? Let's say, for instance, you have to deal with ableism, racism, or sexism, ableism. They're intertwined. They're very connected. Ableism is part of racism. Racism depends on ableism to do its work. And it also depends on sexism to do its work. So they're all interconnected. Right now in the United States, there are a lot of people who know what racism is, a lot of people who know what sexism is, and a whole lot of people who don't know what ableism means. Yes. And that is incredibly frustrating that a lot of people are engaging in ableism and have no idea and they think it's absolutely okay. One thing Which I of the three do you find most frustrating, Lachi? Oh, I'm sorry. Is this an interview where Lachi's asking Hobbin questions or is this an interview where Hobbin's asking Lachi questions? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with you. Um, for me, I believe that one of the toughest things is that these microaggressions are not seen as isms, right? Now, why is it 2021 and people are just realizing that they've been doing racist things? Why is it 2021 and people are just learning about the term disability in the first place? And the worst thing that I come to find is that a lot of folks do things that are ableist and they actually think that they're being supportive of the disability community when in fact they're hurting it. Ableism is all over American society. So many jokes depend on ableism and people laugh and they don't realize that there's ableism. People put me in that argument. Hey, this deaf blind woman went to Harvard. What's your excuse? 
I don't like those arguments because it implies a deafblind person shouldn't be able to go to Harvard. I didn't really enter disability justice, disability rights, disability awareness until about three years ago when I finally decided it's time for me to stand in front of my vision loss. I originally was afraid to to talk about it just based on the career choice of being a musician and being in rooms with top level producers and Sony and Universal rep agents and feeling awkward. Now I love it, but that wasn't always the case. What is the best way for someone like me who is really trying to showcase my blindness and showcase my disability in a major way to mainstream media to get them motivated? motivated and inspired and interested without it coming across as inspiration exploitation. <laughs> How are you defining inspiration exploitation? All right, I'll just go ahead and say it. Inspiration porn. I was trying to avoid the word, but you made me say it. Inspiration porn. I like the word inspiration exploitation but a lot of people watching this won't know what it means. So go ahead, what are you talking about? I remember walking down the street and I had my cane and I had my boss ass, you know, heels on and someone I heard whispering, oh wow, I don't know if I could do that. Bless her heart, she still looks so good though. And it's like, if you know how to put on heels and you know how to walk down the street, then you know how to do what I'm doing. I put on heels and I'm walking down the street. Long story short, that's how I define inspiration porn. However, it feels like that's the way you grab people sometimes to get them engaged in the conversation. Let me know what you think about that. I mean, obviously you don't agree. <laughs> that person is being ableist. And the more you speak about blindness and are out, you're going to receive more ableism and you can gently correct them Blind people can do anything with the right tools and training. Or if you're too tired, you don't even have to correct them. It's a choice. You can teach people or you can stay silent. <laughs> right. Not every moment has to be a teaching moment. But when you are hit with the spirit, then you're free to. I totally hear that. So there, there's a question I'm trying to formulate, and I recognize that we're getting extraordinarily meta at this point. <laughs> but I want to be able to engage with folks at the major mainstream level and bring them in to want to have this conversation. And I want to entice them to want to come in. At the end of the day, when someone does accomplish a tough task, it is inspiring. And I recognize that myself being award nominated, award winning and doing all these things is already inspirational. I don't have to say, oh, and I did this blind, but I would love a suggestion on I mean, because you're you're obviously very accomplished and you obviously don't use inspiration porn to get yourself out there. So I'm actually asking you for honest advice. My honest advice is to share how you're learning about ableism because a lot of non-disabled people and disabled people are still struggling to figure out what ableism is. So show your journey of how you are identifying ableism in your world pointed out to people so they could learn themselves. All right, let's brighten things up just a little bit. So you are a daughter of immigrants. You yourself are an immigrant, I believe. I was born and raised in California. Where oh. on earth did you get your information? So I swear I read your book. Why did I think that you were born in Eritrea and that you and your father got on a flight and that was the first time you all were coming to America? I am misremembering it right here live on this YouTube series. Am I not? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure what to say. I was born and raised in California. There was a story and a YouTube video about my experiences on a plane with my father. That was in Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia at the airport there. But I was born in Oakland. Okay, fine. I believe you. Um, <laughs> uh, so- Thank goodness. 
Um, so actually, I really loved your book, Abin, a deaf blind woman who conquered Harvard Law. I took in the book from your audio version that you actually read yourself. So I really felt like I was getting to know Haben from Haben herself. And it was really, really inspiring. Can you tell me what drove you to write your book and just the experience of getting it all out there? You called me inspiring. So I have to pause and ask, what are you inspired to do? Well, A, I am inspired to write a book and not hire you as a ghostwriter and go ahead and give it my own go. I look forward to reading your book one day and because it will be your book, it will show people your unique journey. Every blind person is different. There's a solution that works for one person and it may not work for the next blind person and that's absolutely okay. We need society to recognize that we're multi-dimensional, multi-talented, and we need to recognize as many voices as possible. I hear that. Haben, this has been so enlightening and you always dropping gems, always dropping knowledge, always coming through with the big talk. I love it. And I'm so excited that you are a part of this journey of mine, that you are someone I would consider a friend, a colleague. And like I said, I, I love watching your experience. Everything you do is just so, so big and so awesome. I'm, I'm just really glad that I was able to grab you, Miss Busybody, and have you on this series. Thank you so much for coming through. Thanks for having me on the show and looking forward to your book. <laughs> She's really about this book. Okay, I got you, girl. <laughs> All right, what an interview. Thank you so much, Haven. Just because I'm out here fighting for disability awareness and inclusion doesn't mean I don't have a lot to learn. Thank you everyone for sticking around to the end of this video. Please hit that subscribe button to continue on this journey with me. Just a New York girl going blind and trying to stay fabulous. A lot more to come. So stick around.